Hi everybody. Uh, this week I'm introducing my Let's Play 2025, the th free block of the month I'm planning for next year. I'm introducing what the details and I also made an example to sort of give you an idea of what I had in mind. This is not the block of the month next year. This is just an example that I made ahead of time of that telling you the truth. It's making the five-year-old girl in me giddy. <laughs> it's so cute. Okay, as you know, green and pink are my favorite colors. So, um, This is a, a hand-stitching, relaxing, no pressure, just enjoyable creating by hand. And none of the project the blocks we make through the year are don't have to be for anything except that they make you happy. Me personally, I'm going to hang mine. I have a, a little hanger that I'm going to use to hang mine. And I also have a special box to keep them in afterwards. But you can make them as uh, a series and put them together in a, in a fabric book. You can um, join them somehow on a background and make them a wall hanging. You can make an individual fabric collage with someone in mind um, featuring their likes and give it as a gift for them to look at. Um, it, it, there isn't, the only real rule with this block of the month is I give you the two colors we're going to play with at the beginning of the month. And the, the only thing you have to do is create something in those two colors. Everything else for your personal block is up to you. Okay, so I made some notes here, so let me just refer to them so I don't forget anything. Um, so yes, this begins in January 2025. I'll post two, the two colors of the month um, on my website on the block of the month section. I will also be posting a video every week that's going to show you my progress on my block. And if it inspires you or you want to make one like mine, feel free. That's totally allowed too. I just, um, you, it's, you can create it the way you want it that makes you happy. I can't stress that enough. <laughs> I want this to be fun and relaxing. No pressure. Um, my example would be if I gave the colors at the beginning of the month of green and pink. <laughs> so you basically, um, I st one thing you'll have to consider is what size. They don't all have to be the same size. I've decided to make mine all the same size. And they do fit in this special box that I have. Um, when I was originally um, deciding on my size, I was getting the ruler out and trying different combinations. And then when I got a piece of cardboard to cut it out, I found this one, which is the bottom of an old cardboard box. And it looked just the right perfect size. I didn't even measure it. So that's the size that I used for my block and I will use for all my blocks. And again, it doesn't have to be exact or perfect or anything. I never strive for perfection because then it looks machine made. I, I want some wonky in there. I want some charm. It, it just it makes it more charming. This isn't complete, by the way. You can see that I've still got some of my basting stitches where I need to stitch still, but I've made some really good progress. Now, if you want as a, a guide what I am going to do, this is seven and a quarter approximately by... 10 and an eighth. I'll give you in centimeters too. Uh, almost 18 and a half centimeters by uh, almost 26 centimeters. Um, yeah, it, it really, if you want to put them in a book, you might want to have them all pretty much the same size. All right. Um, let's see. <laughs> okay, so when I give you the prompt at the beginning of the month of the two colors, 
the basically collects the your favorite fabrics that you really love in those colors and um, some buttons and some embellishments and some embroidery flosses just gather them up and then you get to play so um, yeah basically and I'm gonna sh after I mention all this little section here I'm gonna I've taken pictures when I made this a long way actually not to share with you at all but just for my own remembrance on my phone I just whenever I had it set up exactly how I liked I took a picture and that way if something fell off or whatever I'd have a record of how I liked it so you start with your background um, you choose a motif for a theme and a, or a focus and that can be you making it for example if you wanted a tree you could make a trunk and a, and out of the fabric but if you had a picture of a tree you loved on fabric, you could also cut that out and use that. Like, this is a piece of fabric on here um, that I'm cut out. And this is a piece of fabric. And this th um, thread and pin cushion came from a fabric that I just literally cut out. It's all raw edged. I'll show you up close in a minute. And um, I just for fun I'm going to show you these aren't on either yet and they're going to add so much to it so I'm going to add those there and that one there and this one here and these five little green beads and again I could add to this on top of it I'm not 100% sure yet are going to go here and I'm going to add a, like a French knot in the middle of each that's the plan thus far I'm also going to add French knots in each of these little um, dips on the rickrack. Yeah. This is still not, like, I'll show you the completed one when we start the whole thing, or, or probably on my social media accounts, um, as soon as it's finished. So, uh, I'm, I'm, basic embroidery is all you need, and I do have a decorative stitches file how-to in the library slash techniques page of my website. And it's free and you can request it. And I also have an embellishments one that gives you the best suggestions on how to stitch down trims and things like that. You you will decide for yourself how, like mine's not really primitive, but if you wanted primitive, you might go for torn th fabric so that you get the, the fraying on the edges. Or I did do some raw edges and you can um, applique if you want. I didn't. Like here, again, I'll show you soon, but um, that's folded over, but I didn't applique the edge. I did a, an embroidery stitch on top. You, I pinked as well. There's a, an edge that I pinked. I'm going to remove these now so I can lift it up and show you. So it's it's up to you and how you want to have it look, what you want your final, what makes your heart sing is best and most important. <laughs> it's your picture. You do it the way you want it and makes you happy. I am going to encourage each week when I make my video, I'll put a post on my Facebook account. And um, you are. I'm going to encourage you to, in the comments of that post, um, show me a picture of your progress when you've when you've made your weekly progress or or email me the the picture that's also good and um, I'll always include the link to that particular video um, post Facebook post in the description of the videos of the weekly video so it'll it'll be easy for you to find uh, okay now let me show you these things up close and then um, you can see some of the ideas. Now here, oops, there, it's raw edged and I just uh, away from the edge did a running stitch to hold it down and then in the lines of the, 
the thread spool, I did some more running stitch and it just gave it a really pretty texture. Now for my top edge, I'm doing a fold over and I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna stitch that yet. But here you can see that that's folded over, but I put it down with a cross, cross, no, what are those called? Cross the cross stitch. Duh. Anyways, on the sides, um, I folded them in so that they're not raw on both sides. And then I did a blanket stitch. Now on this one, on this side, I did a blanket stitch, but I edged the, the lace right up on the edge so that it, it caught that as well. And I still intend to stitch this down, though I don't have to. Okay, and then what else? So more raw edge running stitch. Uh, these I just stitched down with um, regular sewing thread here and there to hold them. Same as this here, this trim. This uh, vintage trim I did, the bottom is um, raw edges. But the trim had a fold over edge, so I put it on the very bottom and did a tinier blanket stitch and then a running stitch on top. And I think that turned out really charming. And here's more raw edge um, stitches like the spool up there. And you know where I got this from? I was cutting up a piece of fabric and there was the salvage. And I'm personally not a salvage saver. I, I know it's a great art out there. So many interesting, did you see my friend's... Um, salvage poem that she made I posted on Facebook that was that's amazingly creative this picture was on the salvage and I thought isn't that a cute little pink house so I cut it out and, and put it on there so there I used a salvage no <laughs> you can use anything old fabrics it doesn't have to be cotton it can be velvet or corduroy or linen or whatever you want for your texture that you want for your picture all I'm going to insist on is that you, well, and even that, is, I break the rule if you want, but if you don't really like the colors I choose for the month, pick different colors. That's okay. Just play along with me. I hope you do. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and this will begin the beginning of January. I can't, ex I meant to look at the, the calendar before I went on. It won't be the first. I'm not going to be doing it on New Year's Day, but... Sometime in the first few days of January, I'll, I'll have my update for my site and the video for this. All right. I hope you come. Play along. Questions. Give me any questions you want, either in the comments or email me. And yeah, this is what it is. I hope you're excited about it as I am. Thanks for watching.